Welcome to another Figma tutorial. In this video, we'll cover the basics of using the text tool in fonts. Fonts are a critical component of interface design. The font you select determines the readability and the appeal of your text. The color, size, spacing, and width all convey a message to the users of your product. Figma comes preloaded with hundreds of Google fonts, so you can start designing quickly. Visit fonts.google.com to learn more about your favorite fonts preview a font family or font style, or to discover new fonts through various filters. You can also use your local fonts as long as you're using Figma on a Windows or a Mac computer. If you are using the Figma web app, you will need to download and install the Figma font helper to find your fonts. You can download the font helper from account settings within Figma. The font helper will allow Figma to recognize the fonts you already have on your machine. If you are using the Figma desktop app, your local fonts will be ready to go, no font helper required. If you choose to use your own local fonts when collaborating with others, each editor will need their own copy of that font in order to edit text using that font. I'm happy with the Google fonts provided, so let's get started. We can access the text tool by clicking the T icon in the toolbar, or by using the T keyboard shortcut. There are two ways to create a text element. Single click and start typing. By default, this creates a text box with the auto resize attribute set to width. This allows the width of the text box to grow along with your text. Another option is to click and drag to create a text box with specific dimensions. Since we're determining the size of the text box in this scenario, the auto resize is set to fixed. This allows longer strings of text to wrap around to the next line once it reaches the edge of the fixed text box you created. If it extends below the bounding box, the box will not resize vertically. To edit an existing text element, double click inside the text box. We'll change the auto resize value to height. The bounding box grows vertically as new text is added, but not horizontally. We've covered the auto resize attribute in the advanced type menu. However, there are other useful functions in the text section of the properties panel. First, we have a drop down menu where we can select a new font. You can also type in this field to search. Let's search for the Open Sans font. Below, we have two additional fields. Change our font size, and view and select the font styles available for our selected font. Let's change our font size from 10 to 8 by selecting the field and pressing the down arrow key twice. You can also change font styles through common keyboard shortcuts. Command B to bold our text. Command I to italicize our text. Command U to underline our text. Next, we have line height to change the amount of space between each line of your text. The default value is set to 100%, which is equal to the default line height for the selected font. By holding shift and using our up arrow key, we can increase this in increments of 10. To the right of line height, we find letter spacing, which changes the space between characters. If we'd like to adjust the kerning of certain character combinations, we can also use letter spacing. By default, Figma uses percent values but if we type in a pixel value, we can change the unit to pixel. Let's change some of the spacing to two pixels. Next, we have paragraph spacing and paragraph indentation. Paragraph spacing changes the space between paragraphs that are separated by returns and in the same text box. Let's set that to 10. Paragraph indentation will add additional space to the left of the first character in each paragraph. Let's change this to 5. We can adjust the alignment and the justification of our text to determine where it should be placed within the text box. Our options for horizontal justification are left, center, right, and justified. Our options for vertically aligning text are top, middle, and bottom. You can also use attributes not within the text section of the properties panel to edit text. If we would like to change the color of our text, add a stroke, or add an effect, we can do that by editing the fill, stroke, and effect properties. Let's make this text red by changing its fill. And we'll add a black one point stroke to this text layer. Lastly, we'll add a drop shadow to this text by adding an effect. Let's review what we've learned today. Visit fonts.google.com to discover new fonts and see what styles are available. Install the font helper to use local fonts if you're using the web app. Auto resize has three values, width, height, and fixed. Type a number followed by px to change the line height and letter spacing units to pixels. 
Use justification and alignment to position your text within its bounding box.